solving it numerically using a built-in tool in MATLAB. Okay, and then at the end you'll do a little exercise and you won't need the battery for that. Okay, so let's say I gave you this problem here. Um, I think this is a, what, it's not up there? <laughs> I mean, what's, the, what's your problem? Okay. Um, usually I look to see if it's up there. I guess I got overconfident. Let's, you know, projector's probably not on. That's always a, that's always a killer. All right. So like I said, I'll teach you two ways to solve linear, uh, linear differential equation systems in MATLAB. First way will just be mimicking what I taught you yesterday, which is, um, but now you can use MATLAB to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and that's kind of useful. And then the second way will be, um, I just have to ramble for nine more seconds. The second way will be doing it analytically. Is this uh, homework? This is homework six. Okay. Finally. All right. Did you extend homework seven? Yeah, it's due tomorrow. Yeah. All right. So here's the homework you can pick up afterwards. It's homework six, I guess. Yay. Okay, so let's say I gave you this problem and you wanted to solve it and I let you solve it in MATLAB. Okay, so what do we have there? We have right, D, typical thing here, D, A, Y, this, I called it DT, the independent variables time here, A times Y. Okay, you want to solve that? So, and I give you a set of initial conditions for Y. Right, so this is a three-dimensional system, and we want to solve it. Obviously, we want to get the solution y of t here, but we want to use MATLAB to basically generate this. So first thing I'm going to do is what you'd expect. That's I'm going to take the matrix A, and the, that command obviously forms the matrix A. Everyone knows how to form a matrix, I hope, at this point in MATLAB. And then I'm going to issue this command, which I taught you about a week ago or a week and a half ago. That, that function finds the eigenvalues and eigenvectors for a matrix. And so that's the command. If you look at what x is, that is the eigenvector. So each column is one of the eigenvectors. And d is the diagonal matrix with the eigenvalues along the diagonal. Okay? And, you know, again, MATLAB comes up with these crazy numbers because it wants the norm of each of these columns to be 1. But you can, you can obviously see that here, for example, if I were to do this, this, this would be 1, minus 1, and 1. But, so it comes up with these numbers because it wants to have a norm of 1 for each of the eigenvalues, eigenvectors, I should say. All right, so this would be the first step, right? You'd find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Now, you know the solution looks like this. The, the solution to this equation looks like that, okay? So y, again, a three-dimensional vector. It's going to have three terms, each involving an exponential, involving one of the eigenvalues. Each of those is going to be multiplied times one of the eigenvectors. Right, so each term on the right-hand side is also a three, uh, 3D column, the right, three-component column vector because of the eigenvector x. And so we know the solution looks like that, right? So what we want to do now is compute what the initial condition is, right? I mean, sorry, what the um, constant C are. Somewhere in the notes, I'm having to think where I did this, but we know that, um, I'm trying to think, is it, I can't remember if z equals x times um, y, or is it the other way around? Um, I'm just going to explain where I get this thing. Feel a lot of pressure due to the battery and everything. Hey, you're too kind to save me the trouble. I'm not used to getting any support, okay, uh, from anybody on any level for anything. <laughs> but. Um, but my personal problems aside, what was the answer again? Uh, x, x inverse uh, y. So z equals x inverse y. Of course, that makes a lot of sense. I should be able to see that. So, um, so what we, if we want to find the constants, then um, you can say, well, y of 0 here, oh, sorry, is equal to c1 x1 here plus c2 x2, right? I'm just setting time equals zero in that first equation, like that. And then this is a problem that looks like um, should be c1, c2, c3, ugh, sorry, times the matrix x, if I'm not making a mistake here. All right, and so if this is true, z equals x inverse 
times y. So that means z0 equals x inverse times y0. Uh, what I probably really want, though, uh, I'm going to go get the notes, sorry. Mike is just really flustered right now. Okay, let's see if he can pull it together. Here we go. Okay, so, so what I'm doing here, if you look at this equation, this one right here, okay, this says, forget all this gibberish, even though it's all true, it's not useful. Um, if you look at the equation I wrote up that I did this example at the end of class last time, that equation says X, which is the modal matrix, the one with the eigenvalues on the, um, as columns, times the vector c is equal to y of 0, OK? That's, that's basically what that equation is. For that equation, x is that matrix I show you. That's the two-dimensional column vector. And the thing on the right-hand side is the initial condition. You can see it on the previous slide for y. That means that you can find the initial condition like this. That's the equation I gave in the new notes, OK? All right, mercifully so. OK, so that's what I'm doing here. So I know the solution form looks like that. I found the eigenvalues and eigenvectors now. I need to know those constants c. So I'm using this equation here from the previous notes to find the c. So I'm going to, first of all, I already have the x matrix, because when you do the calculation of the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, the x it gives you back is the modal matrix. It is the matrix with the eigenvectors on as columns. So we already have that matrix. So I can simply take the inverse of that times the initial condition, right? And somewhere, oh, there I specified the initial condition in the thing above, right? The initial condition I gave you on the previous slide is 3, 2, and 1 as a column vector. So I form that column vector, call it y0, do the multiplication, and I get those constants there, OK? This is nothing other than you would do it analytically, except now you can do all the calculations with MATLAB. It's, it's a bit easier, OK? So now you have all the constant C. You have all three eigenvalues. You have all three eigenvectors. Now the question is, what do you do? Well, you don't have an analytical solution in the sense, that, well, you do if you wanted to print it out. You could write it out. But what I'm going to do is plot, that ex pl plot the response, OK? We've done things like this before in fast, like the first week of class. So first of all, I'm going to form a time vector. You remember what this command does, right? It forms a vector of time points starting at 0, ending at 10 in increments of 0.1. So it creates a big, long vector, 0 0.1, 0.2, 0 0.3, all the way up to 10, OK? And then I'm just going to basically plot this here. I'm going to compute this thing and plot it, OK? So right, c1, that's the coefficient. That's the first coefficient I found, right? I found these are the three coefficients. So now I'm just going to basically calculate this equation at different values of x, which in this case is time, and then plot the solution. So this thing here is the first term. You take the constant c you got from the previous page, multiply that times the, this is that matrix, right? And this thing here pulls off the first column of the matrix. It says all, in, all, in, all rows, first column. So that's the first column of that matrix. I multiply that times the, that D is a diagonal matrix. Along the diagonal are the eigenvalues. So that's the first eigenvalue, whatever number that was. If I went back, I would find it's minus 3, that number right there. And I have to do the dot here, right, because I want to do it element by element multiplication, right? And so we've done this before. And so that that's the first term. 
that's the second term, that's the third term. So this is going to compute a vector y. It's going to have three components, y1, y2, y3, OK? And so if you issue this command plot here, and then you can label and legend and all that, you'll get, you'll get uh, responses that look like that, OK? So if you look at, for example, the blue one, that's, um, that's equal to y1. That's what, that is y1 versus time. The green one is y2, and the red one, uh, red one is y3, OK? So if you want to know why they look like that, well, first of all, hopefully these things start at the correct initial conditions. Okay, and then they all go to zero because if you have a, if you have an equation that's homogeneous, you know it looks like dy dt equals a times y, and a is a full rank matrix, then y is going to go to zero. All the components of y will go to zero as t gets large. Okay, so what you see here, for example, in the in the blue one is you have two exponent, all these, ter all these things have um, three exponential terms, right? If you look back here, and they involve these three eigenvalues. So I think once you start getting things like, if, you know, if you have one exponential term, it's not so hard to see what it'll look like. If you have two, maybe not so hard. Three, maybe, maybe not so easy, I don't know, okay? So all this is an example that you can use MATLAB to calculate the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and then you can use MATLAB to calculate the constants. And then you can take that equation and plot it. That's, that's all it is, OK? So is it faster than doing it by hand? Probably, if it's three-dimensional, it is. And certainly, if it was higher dimensional than that, it would be much faster, OK? So in principle, if you, found, if you did all this results by hand, you would get this equation. If you plotted this equation, you would get the exact same thing, OK? So it's just faster this way, OK? So then you might ask, is that the way you should do this? The answer is, well, if you really wanted to generate that plot, you wouldn't do it this way. <laughs> you would do it the way I'm going to show you. This is good because you have the analytical solution if you want it, because you found the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, but you don't actually have to do it that way. You can use some built-in tools in MATLAB to do this. Just checking out my, <laughs> my battery. Um, I should call Ezra over here, you know that guy? Make him go get my cord again. But, I figure 50 minutes, we got a fighting chance. All right. So um, what, what I'm going to explain to you is how you can basically plot this directly. So in, a, in other words, if I want to solve an equation like this and I know the initial condition, let's say y of 0, I don't have to go through the whole trouble of like calculating eigenvalues and eigenvectors. There's, there's a tool in MATLAB to calculate the response of this directly and plot it. But to use this, you have to use this certain format for the model called state space system. So I'm just going to explain this to you real quick. We're going to use this a lot in control when that's a couple years from now. But so this is a system that looks like this. Okay. So this is what MATLAB does. What this so this you agree this model is more general because normally what do we consider? We don't have that term and we don't have this equation at all. Usually we just have dx dt equal ay or ay dy dx equal ay whatever. Okay? You have to call this thing now x, and you have to call this y, because that's what everybody does. Okay? But all I'm saying is you have a set of differential equations, then you have these equations, which I'll explain in a minute, but we don't really need in this context. And so what this it allows you to do is calculate the response of a system to an input, and this input might change with time. So that's what we do in control, but I'm just going to teach you how to use it here. Okay? So what we want to do here, right, we, most of this we don't care about. All we want to do is solve a problem if you use this kind of notation here. dx dt equal a times x. That's all we're interested in. Okay? So if you want to, you have to use this representation because that's what MATLAB demands. So what I can do here is, right, I can set the b, the b is a vector, a matrix. It says how the input affects the derivative. We don't have an input. You don't even know what an input is. Okay? So you can just set that equal to zero. We don't have that. We don't have um, a D, again, because we don't have an input here. So you can also set this D matrix to 0. And then what you do is you set the C matrix to be I. That, so if you set the C matrix to equal I, that means Y is equal to, equals to X. Because what MATLAB wants to do is it wants to calculate what happens if you change U, and it wants to tell you what Y does. So what I'm going to do is tell it, in this case, I don't actually have a U. But it only gives you the output y, so you have to define y to be equal to x in order to use it. So if you make these definitions, 
then you reduce your problem basically back to the one you want, and you can use the function I'm about to explain to you, and I'll show you how to use it, okay? All right. So this is a command that you can use in MATLAB. Um, and so what this does is if you give it those three, right, I just showed you on the previous page, those four matrices, A, B, and C, and D, you issue this command called SS, okay, that means state space, then it creates something called SIS, and this is a so-called state space object. It's the thing that you need to calculate the response I'm about to show you. So this is the first step, you have to create this thing, okay? All right, so if I want to do what I said, then I'm going to specify A to be the matrix of interest. So it's the, again, it's the same matrix I did in the first problem. It's this three by three matrix that looks like that. Okay. In MATLAB, if you want something to be zero or not exist, you just give it empty brackets like that. I don't know if you've seen that before. That just means I don't have a B and I don't have a D. Okay. And if I want C to be a diagonal matrix with ones, in other words, the identity matrix, I do this command. You remember what that does, right? That creates a three by three identity matrix. Just creates a three dimensional matrix of ones along the diagonal. Okay? So this does what I said on the previous slide. It takes that general representation and then gives you a representation that looks like this. Okay, no inputs, that's why B and D are zero. There's no difference between Y and X, that's why it sees the identity matrix. Okay? So, if you specify it, the four matrices to be this and then issue this command with no semicolon there, then MATLAB will spit out all this stuff. Okay? So what is it spitting out? It's spitting out the A matrix. Yep, you've already done that. It tells you there's no B and D, those are just empty matrices, and then it gives you the C as the identity matrix. You might say, well, that's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Because <laughs> all it did was spit back what I gave it. Okay? Like, what's the achievement here? So, this is a certain um, structure that MATLAB likes. So, if I were just to do this real quick to show you something. Okay, good. And then I'm going to issue this command. And it's going to print out all that stuff we just saw. Okay, now if you look up here, you see you've created something called sys. And if you click on this, <laughs> it says nothing. <laughs> As my wife would say, I'm sad. Okay. I never say that, though. I say I'm mad. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so I don't know why it wants to represent. So, but what it's done is it's created something called sys.a, sys.b, sys.c. Okay, so it's created what's actually called a structure in MATLAB, where each of it has all these things, and you access them like this. Okay? And if you did this um, B1, you'd see that it says there's nothing. So it's not quite the same as... You know, it took your A, B, C, and D and put it together in something called sys. It's not the same as A, B, C, and D separate, okay? And this is what MATLAB needs or requires of you. This, you know, when you use these kind of computer-aided tools, it doesn't behoove you to say why, just how, okay? So you could say, well, why does MATLAB want to do that? Well, I don't know, you know? Well, I know it does, and if you want to participate, you've got to do it too, right? Maybe that's not the thoughtful response you're looking for, but that's what you're going to get. All right, so it's created this, you know, sys object, um, and now we can use it. So you can use this command here. So you remember the goal here is I just simply want to plot the response of this system for some initial condition, right? <coughs> Implicit in this is the initial condition is not zero, and I want to see how the system decays to zero, right? Because I'm pretty sure it's going to end up going to zero, as long as A is full rank. Right, because if we talked about steady states last time, right? Steady state is where this equals zero, and as long as A is full rank, that means A is going to be zero. So A is going to end up being zero. So it's only going to be interesting if A doesn't, I mean, sorry, Y is going to end up going to zero. It's only going to be interesting if it doesn't start at zero. Otherwise, it's going to be flat lines at zero, okay? So that's why it call, it's called um, initial plot. It says, if you read the fine print, this command plots the undriven response. What does that mean? It means it has no input. Okay? We don't care about inputs in this class. 
of the state space model sys created, we just created it with the initial condition so right here. Okay, so it's going to it's going to plot the response of this system to this initial condition. It's going to do the exact same thing I did when I had to do all those commands, right? I had to do the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and then I had to find the constant c, then I had to multiply them all out to get the things, and I had to plot it. This, this will do it in one command. So it's doing the same thing, it's just saving a lot of time. Okay? Now you do, admittedly, have to first of all create the sys thing, which we did on the previous slide. That wasn't so hard. Okay? So you have to, that's the first step, you have to create that. And then you can issue this command, okay? So I, I made this little command. So this response corresponds to what we said before, okay? There's no input, this thing here. Y is the same as X here. That should be the identity matrix. And so to use this, once you've created this thing called sys, you just give the initial condition and then you issue this command, okay? You, so you say, please plot the response of this system that I've created to the initial condition X0. And then it gives you this command it's this is one of these things that you like, is this a problem? And I can tell you this is, doesn't matter, okay? It says some of the specified systems have no input and or output. That's because we specified the B and D to be zero. It's not something to worry about. So if you issue this command, it'll give you back this plot, okay? And so the plot shows you the three, Im the three outputs, they like to call them. In other words, what we called Y1, Y2, and Y3 plotted versus time, okay? It chooses all the scaling, it chooses how, how long the time will be. We plotted them all on one plot, it's plotting them on three separate plots, okay? But it's the same, it'll be the same thing I had on the previous page, okay? So for example, if you went back and you looked at the Y1 that I plotted, it should look like, the fr like that plot up there, okay? So, I plotted for a longer period of time, but it's this, basically this blue line here, okay? So, I mean, my point here is that if you wanted to do this, you could either do it this way, which to me is a lot more laborious than just simply issuing this command, these three commands, and then doing this. But you get the same answer, okay? But it's a, it's a little bit easier. Okay. So, um, here's what I'm going to have you do. My battery's surprisingly strong. All right, I'm going to have you solve this problem using the same idea. Okay, so here's a little reaction network. I made this up for kicks, okay? So what do you got here? You got some, you know what that picture means at the top, I hope. You've seen things like this. So this says A reacts to B, but this reaction is reversible, right? So B goes back to, to A. They have rate constants for these reactions called K1 and K2. Then, um, then B further reacts in two parallel reactions to C or D, and then C further reacts to give you E. And each of them has a different rate constant. And let's say the goal here is to make C. So in other words, A, and B, a is the reactant, B is an intermediate, and D and E are undesirable byproducts. Like, you don't want those, you want C, okay? So I know you guys don't, haven't had the class yet, so I'm, I just wrote out, wrote out the equations here, but I don't think they're that hard to understand. So for example, you're saying, what is this equation here? Well, this is a mass balance, not steady state. It's an unsteady state, dynamic, whatever you want to call it, mass balance on A. And it just says the rate at which A accumulates is, if, is the difference between the rate at which A is consumed and A is produced, right? So in other words, if A is consumed by this reaction at the same rate it's produced by the reverse reaction, then concentration won't be changing. Otherwise, it'll change with time. If it's consumed faster than it's produced, then the CEA will go down. Otherwise, it'll go up. Whoops, sorry about that. Okay? And then you can do the same thing with B, right? You look at B, you see there's four reactions. It's produced by this reaction, it's consumed by the second reaction, and it's consumed by the third and fourth reactions. That's where I get these terms here. Okay? So, Again, the key here is not understanding where the equations come from. It's trying, just trying to teach you how to use the equations. And then there's the, then I have an equation for C, right? It's the difference between the rate at which produced by this reaction and consumed by that reaction. Okay. And there's the initial condition. We start with nothing but A. We start with no B or C, okay? And we're interested in, in calculating 
the solution essentially, which is um, this. How all three of these concentrations change with time. Now I have an expectation of how this is going to look. And if I plot this, I expect A to start at 10 and go down. You agree with that? I'm a, A is a reactant. I'm assuming it's going to get depleted. I'm, I don't really care about B because <laughs> I don't feel like drawing it. But I expect C to do something like this. I expect C to go up initially, and then I expect it to come back down. It's going to go up because it's initially produced, but then the rate at which it's consumed will start getting increased. It'll exceed the rate it's produced, then it'll drop back down. Okay? And if you were running this as a batch reactor, and if you were running this thing, you'd want to stop the reactor right there because that's when you have the most C. Right? So if this is a catalytic reaction, you'd want to quench the reaction here and stop it and then get as much C as you can. Okay? This is my, I know it looks like this, okay? but I can tell it's going to look like this from the equations. And so what I want you to do is to use these parameter values, which I made up. For, I, right, it has five rate constants I need to give you. They're the five rate constants. And what you need to do is to solve these set of equations and find out at which to what time the C value equals a maximum. You're like, I have no idea how to do that. <laughs> okay. Well, the first thing you should do is um, form the model, right? And to form the model, you have to form, right, you have to form these matrices. Right? Because you want to you wanna form this A, B, C, and D thing, right? These are going to be just empty, just like I did before. Oh, sorry. Right? The C matrix is just supposed to be the identity matrix of a proper dimension. This is a three-dimensional problem, right? There's three equations. So that's going to look like that. And then A should be the matrix corresponding to those set of equations. Okay. So just to just to give just to help you out because I care. So if we want to form the A matrix, the first row is going to be the first equation, and we just want to pick off what coefficients multiply C A, C B, and C C. So if I look at that, I can see that. The thing that multiplies the first equation, CA, is minus K1. What multiplies the CB is K2, and there is no C3 in the first equation, so it's 0. That's the first row of the A matrix, right? And then I gave you values for all these Ks. So if you plug in all these values, you'll get an A matrix, all right? So try, start by doing that. Um, and then I'll tell you what I think the A matrix should be. It's not very hard. So you just have to form it for the next two equations. Yeah. Maybe the subscript on this equation should be C and D here. K three is C and C four is D. Or is that oh it's no, no, no. going backwards? No, no, this is B this is B, right? Both both reactions three and four are consuming B. Okay, so it's negative so it's going backwards, is that what that's showing? No, so this is a this this one is a balance on B on B. Okay. So if you look at this equation, there's only one equa there's only one reaction that produces B called okay. K one, so right? There's the three reactions that consume it. Two, okay. three, and four. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, who has the A matrix? You have the A matrix or you have a problem? I have the A matrix. <laughs> okay. Tell me what you think the A matrix is for kicks. Go. You made a mistake and you lost your confidence. OK, well, all right. It's going to be a 3 by 3 matrix. I can already tell you what the first row is. It's minus k1, which is minus 4, plus k2, which is 2, and 0, right? I can also tell you, I can tell you what the whole thing is if you want me to. Um, the second row will be k1 
so that's four. And then there's three things that multiply CB, so I'm going to add them all together. And if I can add, it looks like it's minus nine here. It doesn't look like there's anything involving C in that equation. And then um, there's no A in the third equation. But let me see, K3 and so minus, so five and minus two. Is that, is that what you got? What? You think you made a mistake? That's OK. Just use this. No, I'm kidding you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, this, is mi this is minus 1? Yeah, OK. Sorry about that. Is that the only mistake? OK, good. All right, minus 1 there. So you should have got that matrix. See, if I were to do this in MATLAB, I would, I would write out a matrix A that used all the Ks to calculate it. And that way, if I change K2 or something, it would automatically change all the values. But that's just me. All right. So let's say you've got this, you, right? You've got this matrix A. You have to define this B, C, and D here, right? So let's say you've gotten that far. So you've got now all four of those matrices you need. And now, uh, that's not right. Now you can issue this command at the command prompt there. Right? And that command, now that you have formed the A, B, C, and D, this will spit back something called sys. It's that state space thing that combines all the matrices together. It's just like the example I did. The only thing that we've done new for this problem that I didn't do in the example is there's a different A matrix for this problem. That's it so far. Okay? So you should get this thing. The A matrix should look like this. The B and D should be empty. The C matrix should be a 3 by 3 identity matrix. Okay. All right, I think that's all the help I really want to provide. Because <laughs> um, that's pretty much the whole thing. <laughs> all you got to do now is use, the, use this command, that initial plot thing. Okay. And you have to specify initial condition. I gave you the initial condition. You have to specify a vector with the initial conditions. And then you have to do it. So I don't have any good prizes to offer. Let me see what I got in here. I used to have a memory stick I found from last year. It had everyone's, all their chemical engineering work for their entire career on it. But I don't actually have that. Um, of course, I have the, you, I have the Altoids. Um, <laughs> I have a checkbook, um, in case you want to know where all my income is going. Um, got some business cards. I'm trying to get you, entice you to want to do this problem, OK? Um, so let me, let me cheat here a second. Oh, disappeared. OK, so has anyone generated the plots yet? See, it keeps blinking. What the? Now it's gone. Hopefully it didn't run out of battery. I don't know what just happened. Maybe it did. It was a catastrophic failure. All right. So did you generate the, did you generate the plots? Yeah. 